good? Uh -huh. Hi, we're on the stage at the DWF convention in San Antonio. And uh, this is awesome. It's a quiet moment. Very. Nobody's <laughs> in the room. And I have a chance to talk with Sam. So the first question is always the same. How do you say your name again? Oh my goodness. Um, it's actually put, like put your finger in your ear. So that's the only way I can get people to remember it or put your finger in your nose or something like that. So it's put. Okay, so puck <laughs> becomes putch. Puck, pook. Puke is a favorite. I get that You hear that too? Yeah, I get puke a lot. It's not good. So just putch. And then there's the Sandy Sam thing. That's oh. another confusion. Help um, me out. When I was born, my mom wanted a Sandy. My dad wanted a Samantha. My mom named me Sandy. My dad called me Sam. So I've been Sam since birth. Um, I grew up Sam. I actually only started using my first name, Sandy, my, my real name, when I got that nice little short last name that was confusing enough. Sam Puck seemed very confusing, and most people thought I was married to Sam. So I use Sandy professionally in the industry and in my studio, and then everybody I know, friends and family, call me uh, so it's, Sam. Hey, Sam. Sam works. But it says Sandy. Correct. When we're talking when about we're the talking. tour. Yeah, just so that, because again, people get very confused with it, but it's just Sam. If you know me, then it's Sam. You got it? Well, we went straight to you. Now I, I have an answer, and I'll still call you Sandy Puck. It's That's okay. That's fine. I can be anything. I, I'll bet you you answer to a lot. <laughs> to so you have the tour coming up, mm -hmm. Power of Passion. Very excited. Yeah, this is kind of exciting. This is actually our third year, or sorry, this is our fourth year out on tour. Uh, the first three years we actually did uh, Bellies and Babies was in 2008, Tots the Teens was 2009, and uh, Family Tour was last year. So this year we actually... Uh, wanted to bring something new and we hadn't touched weddings yet and I feel um, Although I am a wedding shooter. I do shoot weddings very very few and far between and a very high price point um, I built my company on weddings, so I understand how to market and manage the wedding side of it But truly I don't consider myself an expert in everything and uh, I wanted to bring somebody on that would be mind-blowing so of course when we I spoke to Jerry he was my first choice and only choice, honestly. And when I spoke to him and he agreed to it, we decided to get this thing out there. So we're excited. Well, Jerry has, has wowed everybody <laughs> here at, at the DWF convention oh, with this awesome shoot on the Riverwalk, a very emotional reveal last night. And, and when he spoke on Sunday night, the keynote address, he just said, I may, I'm going to try doing Unplugged. And he, he ripped the cord out of his computer and shut down the speaker system, no music, no slideshows. He just spoke from the heart and it was an amazing and a pretty intimate experience. And that's what's amazing about him. And the thing that I found um, over the years kind of following him a little bit, I finally got to see a whole show in Japan. We were both speaking in Japan. And in English? In, in English okay. um, with translators. So we were in Japan speaking. And I remember going to his show and having never seen a, a complete entire program, I couldn't believe uh, the amount of emotion that he could put into his words. And I realized that my audience is pretty, um, pretty general when it comes to their styles. It's family, children, some weddings. I mean, they kind of have an eclectic mix where Jerry could really take that wedding information and just really what he said really applied to anything we do. The emotional connection he has with his clients, the way he handles lighting, his, his creativity, and really his passion is what really spurred that whole concept. So I, I cannot tell you how excited I am. We are, we're ready to go. Sam, when you're on tour, you see a, a, a staggering number of people over the course of, what is it, six weeks? Correct. How many cities? Uh, typically we do 52 cities. This year we will be 32 um, because Jerry's schedule is a little tight. Uh, but then in addition to that, we have two additional tours that go out that are smaller, 14 cities. And uh, we also do Canada and uh, the UK. So we have quite a few. We have a total of 72 cities this year. How many so that's a lot. people do you <laughs> typically see? Like over the course um, of an entire over tour? Over an entire year, about 20,000 people from start to finish uh, the speaking engagements we do and all the touring, about 20,000 photographers. So there's an, on the DWF, there's always a question of, of street cred. Sure, sure. Because you're out <laughs> teaching, you're seeing thousands and thousands of people, but do you really shoot Absolutely. anymore? Absolutely. Um, I have always balanced my life, uh, especially the last four years with touring. I do six months shooting on, six months touring where I'm off shooting. But remember, every time I'm home, I am actually shooting. I shoot four days a week, Monday through Friday. So it's not just flying um, the flag. It's like, oh, yeah, no, no, I no, shoot no. this week. I'll hit a portrait session. Oh, no, 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 no. We are hardcore marketers. What we're really known for is the marketing aspect of our company. I build, just to give you a little bit of credibility, 
Uh, 11 years ago, my entire company was inside my master bedroom. I was my only employee. You know, I worked out of my home. I started to grow. Now, remember, I'd been there about six years growing my business. It got to the point that I had to um, expand and get commercial space. So imagine 11 years ago, it was just me. Uh, from there, I started to grow. I added a few employees, grew faster and faster. By five years, we were uh, grossing, actually, total take take home within a five year period was about a million and a half. So we went from $72,000 out of my studio uh, to about a million and a half in five years. Did you have time to live anywhere in <laughs> no, there? No, I didn't actually, that's a good question because when I, when I moved into the studio space, just like most people, I was very nervous, very paranoid that I wasn't gonna make it. So I doubled and tripled my marketing efforts. I doubled and tripled my session counts. At that time I was shooting six sessions a day, you know, or I'm sorry, six days a week, up to 13 sessions a day. So I was killing myself. Now, once I really took control of the marketing, I started to refine my company. So over the last six years, I have actually started to really create more of a boutique and studio. So now we shoot less. Um, I only shoot four days a week. I still shoot eight to 10 sessions a day. So compared to most studios, you asked about street credibility, uh, I still shoot 25 to 40 sessions a week. So most people don't want to shoot that in. Week in, month. week out, six months a year. Six months a year, correct. So I still do probably more sessions than the average, average studio does. Um, but now we, with our marketing structure, we've changed it to be a much more high-end client. Um, so our sales averages have gone up quite a bit. So it's kind of a balance between solid marketing structure and understanding that, that high-end side of the business. You're actually doing practicing what you preach in exactly. essence. Exactly. I, I, I guess I tried to become what it was that I always wanted to, to teach. Um, the ideal scenario and I, I feel like we're finally at a point where we are the studio we want it to be. So currently as I said I work four days a week. I have two part-time shooters that each work about two days a week. Um, you know we've gone from 2,000 sessions a year. At my high point we had seven photographers doing almost 2,300 sessions a year uh, down to just the three of us doing, you know, five to 600 sessions a year. So but still, it's staggering just the logistics of dealing with that larger clientele. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Um, you have to start becoming a computer genius. <laughs> well, my, my goal is always to surround myself with people who are amazing at what they do. I know how to market and I know how to shoot. And I had to find the right people, the right creative people and the right... Um, visionary people to sort of build that foundation for my company so so what happens on the tour oh, I mean to, lots to, of to draw on by, by the way there's a DWF discount yes and it is. and uh, probably it's right underneath us right Correct. now it's DWF 11 I believe but we'll confirm that underneath us right now so what, what do you cover uh, this year we're covering everything kind of the nuts and bolts we're starting out with the marketing side of it uh, Jerry's going to cover the lighting. He, uh, the biggest thing for me is I wanted him to explain that emotional connection that he has with his clients because I've had a lot of my students say, you know, I don't do weddings. I've come to every show you've ever done, but I'm probably not going to do this one because I don't do weddings. And I think that's the biggest mistake because Jerry, the work that he does emotionally connecting to his clients, the way he literally takes your breath away and leaves you in tears that kind of information can apply to any photographer. So it really isn't about um, weddings per se. The tour is about weddings, but to me the lighting structure, the creativity process, and that emotional connection um, sort of cross all borders when it comes to style. So, so that is our goal is to get out there and really talk about passion and to really talk about um, how your work can make a difference. Uh, if you've seen my shows before, you know that they are always tied into charity. Uh, I have a really neat charity um, event that we've started this year. And Jerry, of course, has Soul Society, which uh, we are right. very excited to share that with a very large audience as well. And Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep? Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep is always tied in. That is a charity we founded five years ago and um, has just continued to grow and grow. So it will definitely be tied into the show as well. That's awesome. Now the program is an evening, an afternoon in it each is, city? Uh, Monday through Fridays, it's in the evening. Uh, trade show starts at 4 and then the actual show starts at 5. And typically, we always go over because we love to talk. So typically, it's supposed to end at, at 10, and usually between 10.30 and quarter to 11, we actually wrap it you up. You realize how that's going to be a problem with Jerry on the tour. We can't uh, drag him <laughs> off the stage. Uh, well, that's why we're ending at 10, so that if we go to 10.15, 10.30, hopefully you won't be too mad at us. But the truth is, I've always told my audience right off the bat, I'd rather go over a few minutes and give you everything then try to shave things out of the program. So Monday through Friday, it is in the evening, and then the weekend shows, uh, I believe we 
only have one or two Saturday shows. We tried to avoid those where we could. And then Sundays, uh, the trade show starts at 1, I believe, and the uh, show itself starts at 2 and goes to 7.30. I look forward to it. I just yeah. have to pick my city. Yeah, Cities. you a bunch of them. Yeah, we want to see you there all over. Absolutely, and the DWF is proud to be involved as one of the sponsors of the tour. We look forward to seeing you there. We're very excited. Can't wait to see you out there.